Hey everyone, um, I'm Sarah Shuey. I'm the founder and CEO of Happily, and I'm with um, my ride or die, Danielle. <laughs> Danielle Robinson Peterson. We only call you Danielle Peterson at work, and I like yes. who's Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> I like to keep my mating name because it, it it's honors my father, so that's why it's with the Robinson Peterson. Oh, so Robinson is your maiden name. Yes. Okay. Well, I like Robinson too. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so Danielle and I uh, work together at Happily. We're a global, a global media company. Uh, we're the premier platform really for freelance event and media professionals um, who want to team up on socially conscious world-class productions. And we both had babies. Hey. Congratulations, Sarah. Congratulations, Danielle. <laughs> baby Ahmad is the cutest. Yeah. Each baby is special. I was just thinking about this the other day when we were thinking about this. And I was like, Amani was, I was a first time mom. Everything was new, reading books. Like it was, it was exciting. With Amir, he was the first boy. So he was my special, you know, my the boy at the moment. And we thought we were done until we have six month old Ahmad. And Ahmad, I was thinking, I was like, okay, so I should be a pro mom. But of course, every day you're learning. And, and this time with Ahmad, I'm older than how I, you know, when I had Amani. So I'm more of a mature mom, but I still am learning. Cause I ask you questions every day. Cause I can't, I can't remember how it was um, when he first started crawling, when he first, you know, started eating solids and all of that stuff. So thank you for being that, like that anchor for me um, to remind me like, okay, but Ahmad, I, I think of it like with this, I'm like, He's going to spend the least time with me than all the other kids, but he gets the more mature version of me. So each kid, again, is special. So I'm throwing the dagger. It's number two, Orion, Orion sibling. No, <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> it is too hard. And like, I feel like after having one, I don't know, I don't I don't know. Is that crazy? Where like when I was pregnant, like there was a moment I was like walking down the street and I just felt so pregnant powerful where I was like, <laughs> I could buff you, like, you know, like looking at people, you know, and then like after I did give birth and then like I am like seeing how um, Orion and like humans like grow from the beginning. I, I just like, I just feel like everyone, I see everyone as babies now and I'm like, oh, you're just, I get it. Like you're, you're not angry about that thing in the meeting. You're just hungry. You should just go <laughs> eat. Why did you take a nap? Like, don't you feel, do you ever feel like I, before I would get way, way, way more worked up about like stuff, um, politics or you know little things and now I'm like oh is this just like you your physical needs aren't being met right now because you good you're gonna be good in like a little bit so okay we're talking here to talk let's start this right like we're here yes. to talk. <laughs> talk about our experience of returning back to work after two months I did the two months I know you could not tell us about your experience like let's share how when you came back how did you feel like the separation, um, yeah, just overall, how did you jump back into things, being the awesome Sarah that you are and maintain, you know, family, you know, baby, all of that, the shit. Yeah, I think I, like, I started returning to work, like, um, when I started planning to take my maternity leave, actually, like, I posted on LinkedIn and I was like, hey, anybody got, like, some good ideas for, how to take a maternity leave as a founder because there isn't there aren't any books about that let me tell you or if there are i didn't know where they were um and so you know i started pretty early I and mean, even before that started thinking i used to work seven days a week 10 mm -hmm. plus hours mm -hmm. a day like as a business owner just like on the grind um and so i yeah so i started years ago when I decided to have a baby with Coco to not work on Sundays and then mm -hmm. not work on Saturdays and then work on regular hours. So that was like part of it. Cause I think as a founder or as anybody that just works really hard and a lot that return, I knew like I couldn't come back to work on the same schedule. Um, mm -hmm. And then you know, I was definitely one of those people who had my laptop up in the delivery room, you know, hours before I was still like shooting off emails and signing yes, contracts. You were. you were. 
Yeah. I was and like, then, aren't you having a baby right now? <laughs> well, but you you're like, not it yet. It's, not like, yet. it's like the calm before the storm, you know? And I'm glad I did because like after that baby comes, like everything changes, you know? And then we had like, we had a big event and it's actually like when I found out that um, Orion was going to be born in the middle of like spring production season, I was kind of honestly bummed because I was like, oh no, like that's when everyone needs me the most. How can I? And I got pulled back in probably like days after like having mm -hmm. a baby, maybe a week after, um, just like on like a couple of questions you know and i was like but then i was like oh after i broke the seal mm -hmm. of like opening up my slack then i would like start to look at it a little bit more and then it sort of slowly just like got more and more integrated then i started showing up to meetings and mm -hmm. i mean it was a little bit hard because my husband's father my father-in-law passed away the Sorry, day yeah. after orion was born and so he had to and i delivered orion in taiwan and so he and his father and his uh, my my father in law and mother in law live in uh, Arizona. So my husband had to fly out to Arizona that second week of Orion's life. And so I was like alone with him and a bunch of nurses. They have like a really cool like postpartum center thing that I was like out there in. And so that was also like everything was just a blur. I would say mm -hmm. like the first month and then we moved back from Taiwan to the US when Orion was three months. And so everything was still kind of like this blur of I'm like back to work, some kind of things are really different. Like I won't be able to do everything mm -hmm. again the same way. So that's a that's yeah. a reality is like now you have this little human that has his schedule um every two hours um that you have to keep up and I think when I return again I did take my two months um off um thank you thank you thank you and we offer uh, you three I was always wondering it, like why you took two because in the I was thinking of corporate world you know we're just two months two months two months so I was trained like okay I only have about eight weeks and then I have to return but in California again I was working in Georgia before so there were it was different but yeah, I remember Ahmad was the longest like delivery. And I remember Joy, our production coordinator, I, I sneak in the chats and it was a question. And I was like, oh, let me answer Joy. And she was like, really? Like, then yeah, I was like, well, I'm just laying here too. And she's like, Sarah did the same thing. And I was like, I know, I know. I said, my bad. I will not come on until I'll send you pictures afterwards. I got tired. I got tired <laughs> of watching so much Netflix when I, you know, like I got a little bit bored. Yeah. But when yeah. And just, you know, the whole delivery, you know how it is. So it was, you're just sitting there until it happens. And again, he was the toughest. The youngest is always the toughest, like the hardest one. But it was, the, but just coming back, um, like you say, getting back to work, I'm still trying to catch up. So getting back into the meeting world, if Sarah, you've been on top of me not taking a lot of meetings and making sure that, you know, a mod is good and everything. And I'm like, okay, so I'm still learning. Now I have three kids instead of two. So trying to process each and every single one. Um, I have an amazing husband who helps me here at home. So he takes them, you know, during the working hours when he's not busy and just trying to figure it out, but you still have that anxiety. Like you see, we work from home. So you see that little person, you hear him cry. You want to go to the back and make sure he's okay. Um, when you see him, when you like, okay, his smile just brightens up your day. So that's what keeps me going. Um, return and, but the thing is trying to juggle everything and be present at work that is, you know, I'm still trying to figure, like, find that balance and get back into it because I don't feel like I'm as sharp as I was before. And of course, my age, I'm blaming it on my age. I can't like be quick enough. Like Amani, I feel like I jumped back into it. With Amad, I'm like, whoa, okay, this is a different type. Let me slow down. As I always say, I'm like, Sarah, I need to slow down. I need to slow down. So I'm trying to slow down with Amad because I'm not as quick as I was with um Amani I don't know if you hear Ahmad screaming in the background right now I know but... I was like do you need to slow down and get your kid be good? 
no we're good we're good so, the whole know. child care and like what to do with your kid that was yes. a really big stress point for me too like um and like yeah i think it's really critical for anybody to understand like how important it is to like respect the difficulty it is to like get child care for mm -hmm. you know moms like you have your husband and your family that like help. Right. And like, I like was getting, um, you know, I was getting, uh, I got a nanny that nanny like was not working out nannies here. And then I, when I moved to the States are so expensive, like that is our number one biggest expense, you know, like after rent essentially. Um, but like, <laughs> yes. you can't, you know, you can't really do, like it's also like our kid right so like mm -hmm. we were making like so much sacrifice to like find you know somebody to like take care of orion and then i just feel like you, i don't know about you but i i have this like perpetual mom guilt where i'm like nothing's ever like good enough i'm like should i be putting him in childcare or daycare so that he could like be with other kids and get like you know better language skills and stuff like that <laughs> but it's like really hard to return um yeah it's really hard to return back even my schedule now like i work um four in the morning five in the morning mm -hmm. until yes, two do. two p.m mm -hmm. yep so that i can get off work and let the nanny go and take care of orion and so there's like yeah there's times where like my team will like set like a 5 p.m meeting you know <laughs> east coast time and it's 2 p.m and then like i just can't go and it really mm -hmm it bugs me sometimes because I really want to be there, you know, for my team. Um, but yeah, it's just really hard to juggle both. And I think people who don't have kids, like I just notice, like they just aren't on the same, like don't have the same, they just don't have the empathy, you know, like yeah. that um, other parents do. So I that's, that's they, also tough is showing people like what it's like to be a new mom. And I think that's just like you say, understanding. I had amazing female bosses like, my boss in Georgia, Aisha, was she? Hi, man. She basically told me when I was a first time mom, you're a mom first, your work comes second. So make sure that you have home life first, but then transfer that into your work because you got to bring the best you. So if you're not the best you, being a mom mentally and physically, how are you going to bring that to work? And she, her, like, she basically, when we were still in office, she was like, no, you don't come in every day you have a hybrid schedule. So you come in two or three days a week because, and that worked for me. She was a mom. And that was like my first time having, because usually you have male boss, bosses. So she taught me like being a mother, um, well, she showed me and taught me like how to be a mother and work at the same time in the beginning phases. So that's interesting. I mean, I feel like also, I'm like not sure how people go to an office and do this. I was like, how is that work? Yes. Like, you know, we're remote and even remote is still hard. Thankfully we're, we're remote, but I know there's like a lot yes. of, you know, issues around that. How did your, like, how about like the guilt and I heard some mommy guilt, like when you were like talking, when you were talking earlier about, you know, how you've got three kids and Ahmad mm -hmm. isn't going to have the same thing, but it's okay. You know, that he's going to yeah. get the wisdom. Like I like would love to just unpack that a little bit and like, you know, like how do you deal with that while you're at work? Do you just like shove it down and you're like, don't listen, you know, don't listen to it or how do you handle? Oh, I try. I know that my husband is doing excellent in his care, Tyrone. Um, so that gives me comfort. Cause again, child care. You have to trust a complete stranger to make sure that they're taking care of your kid. And you know that you want them to take care of your kid better than what you take, you know, that you, you usually take care of them. So just having that comfort, like, okay, if he hears him scream, he's going to entertain him. Um, so that is less. But when I did have to go back to work, which you said earlier, it was hard. So I had like childcare again, it's very expensive everywhere, even, you know, and it's like a college tuition. But the childcare that I chose for my daughter, they had a camera that comforted me. So I, when I was working, I had a computer with the camera of the childcare and I'm sitting there working. So I would just glance. So if anybody comes into my office, it's just like, okay, I don't feel guilty, but I do. Like if I see anything strange on the video, I, I was one of those moms like, hey, 
what is that person doing? Um, he's just there by himself with the kids. I like was very open for that, but that serve that service gave that provided me like a little bit of comfort. Like I could watch my child when she's sleeping or you know playing or uh, playing with other kids. So that gave me a sense sense of like, do I I can exhale? But with I I just know like with a mod him being home and I could actually spend time that gives me a little bit comfort like I'm here with you now more than I was with the other two because again I was back to work in two months literally it was like cut drawn and with a mod with a mirror sorry I get a mod and a mirror I confuse you them. Do. <laughs> every every because all of my kids start with a but a mirror he was with somebody that we trusted she was a former teacher um a principal and she basically raised him like his, her grandson. Um, so that gave me comfort as well. But I was still like, what are you doing? I can, you know. I have to say that like, you know, that I have mad respect for like every working mom, you know, that um, I meet because I just know how difficult it is to juggle. And then there's also like, I haven't even gotten to like the school where like there's like stay at home moms. There's like the stay at home mom, working mom, mm -hmm. like battle, <laughs> but like every working mom, like just knowing how organized, how responsible, like you need to be um, in order to be able to like show up, you know, at work or show up for your kid is it's super, super impressive. And now I want like every mom in the world to work with us <laughs> please me too <laughs> you know, I'm not even like the best. I'm like so I could pull things from them like how do you do how do you balance especially when you're on uh, at an event for 16 hours like I love hiring just moms and dads just to like pull any type of information and they have great advice like from like our producers in London um New York I'm always asking so so tell me, you know, you're a working mom, like, let us know if it gets too overwhelming or like you need a break or, you know, you can't make it this meeting because you have to go and pick up your kids. We, we hear like so many amazing stories that we welcome them. And I think that's because we're like moms and a majority of us have kids. So we, we are, you know, compassionate with our specialists that have families. So yeah. Okay. I, I like this conversation, but I see we only have one minute, Sarah. So yeah, we should do another. So let's do it. Like, um, we were thinking about doing this like LinkedIn audio thing, like every other week, something like that. And just continuing to like, keep up with it and talk a little bit about what's going on, uh, culturally in our lives, um, at happily. And I want to talk about AI because I really Ooh. am. So I went to Ted AI like two weeks ago or something like that. And I am all about like <laughs> AI in my mom life, AI in my work life. And I think I can be like a much better mom and CEO with it. And I want to like get it, into it. You, you, put me on to AI. So I don't know how you could implement it in your mom life. So I would love to hear about that. So oh my definitely. gosh. You, everyone's gonna think I'm like totally crazy, but I'm <laughs> I'm excited to share. <laughs> well thanks Oof. everybody for joining. Um we like like Sarah said, please if you are a specialist, please check out our uh, career page. We're always hiring for creative profile. And one of our team members will reach out once a gig is in your area. That's team your happily, expertise. team, team happily. Happily. Com. Woo. Yes, yes. <laughs> but thank you, everybody. Thanks. See ya.